Cooperative learning equal participation. In these videos I'm exploring different aspects of cooperative learning. Previously I've explored the model, team building, structures, the five accepted critical elements of cooperative learning in physical education and ideas for using cooperative learning for the first time. Today I'm going to talk about equal participation. Please remember however that while these videos are scripted they are captured in one take with no editing so may be a little rough and ready. Equal participation. Yesterday I explored Robert Slavin's notion of group goals. And today I will explore the E in Spencer and Miguel Kagan's PIES acronym. P equals positive interdependence, I equals individual accountability, E equals equal participation, and S, which I'll cover next, equals simultaneous interaction. The Kagans argue that participation in anything is pivotal to success. Engage, they say, deal with content and actively seek to learn and the high chances are you'll do well on the learning front. Do the opposite and learning is less likely. The reality goes some way to explaining the achievement gap in schools. This isn't about ability, a term that does physical education no favours in my opinion. After all, there is a quote from Tim Notkey that goes, Hard work pays off. Hard work beats talent any day. But if you're talented and work hard, it's hard to beat. But that's a debate for another day. What I'm trying to say, with help from the Kagans, is we want everyone not only to participate, but have an equal chance to participate. If a teacher asks a question in a traditional classroom, then volunteers raise their hands seeking the chance to respond. We've all seen the keen bean bouncing off their seat, desperate to answer the question. Think of Hermione Granger in potions class, in any class for that matter. But what about those who don't raise their hands? The lower achiever, the shy child, the child with special education and needs, or English as an additional language. Equally as worrying is the child who reluctantly raises their hand because they think they have the answer, but whom the teacher doesn't ever select because he or she isn't sure the student will give them the answer that they want. These are the very kids who choose to opt out or are opted out of learning. Equal participation is the commitment to change that situation. It is a changing of the guard from voluntary hands-up responses to an expectation that everyone responds. Instead of asking the class for a show of hands, it is asking student A to tell student B what they think, and then, the next time around, asking student B to tell student A what they think. Research shows that the biggest gains in a cooperative learning classroom occur for the lowest achieving students. Working hand in hand with individual accountability, Equal participation means everyone gets a fair chance to participate and not in the intimidating open forum of the classroom but in, in a small group, a pair even. Students who would resist hands up participation at every opportunity are brought into the mix. Everyone therefore must participate and in doing so benefit from the chance to answer and express their knowledge and understanding or have the chance to ask questions of promoted group mates with the skills to help and respond. In summary, equal participation is about breaking down the barriers to involvement put in place in a traditional car classroom. It is an aspiration to a quality of voice and opportunity. It is about giving everyone the same conditions in which to learn. It is about giving hard work over talent the upper hand. That's it for now. I hope it was worth your time. For more content, please visit my blog at www.peprn.com. Thanks very much and stay safe.